In this video, I want to discuss the cross product. The cross product goes by other names. It is also known as the uh, vector product and sometimes known as the uh, outer product. And so you can see sort of the parallels between the dot product, which was also known as the scalar product or the inner product. Okay, so for the cross product, if we have uh, two vectors, say A, which in component form would be have an X component and a Y component and a Z component, and uh, so let's say a vector B would have the same. We want to compute, which is the cross product, which we would write as a, then a, a large time sign across B. Okay. So um, we can solve that a couple ways. The first way that we'll look at the solution is it is equal to a vector, and that vec the magnitude of that vector is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of an angle, which I'll describe in a minute. And it's a vector, and so it has a unit vector associated with it. So let's say if, if this is uh, B, and this is A, so I have A and B here, uh, tail to tail. Then this theta is the angle between them. So the theta and the sine theta is the angle between A and B once you've put them tail to tail. And that, that's, uh, of course, important because you never know exactly what angle you're given to when given a problem. So the, this n hat here is a unit vector, which means it has magnitude 1 and a direction. The direction is defined to be perpendicular to A and B, and uh, in the direction given by the right-hand rule. So I'll just say given by right-hand rule. Okay, so if the uh, unit vector is perpendicular to A and B, that means it is perpendicular to the plane containing A and B. So here is A and B is in this plane, which means that the unit vector is going to either point perpendicular to the plane, sort of out of the screen or into the screen. And that's given by the right-hand rule. And the right-hand rule is where you'd point your uh, index finger along the first vector, which is A, and then uh, point your middle finger along the second vector, which is B, and then look in what direction your thumb points, given the right-hand rule. And so we, we did this in, in a number of times in the video on right-handed coordinate systems. And if we do that, we find that uh, n hat is into the screen, or let's say into the page, sort of historically think about re reading a book. And so this would, the in hat would be into the page in this, in this case. If we have a right-handed coordinate system, say plus x, plus y, plus z, that would mean n hat in this, ex in this example would be the a negative, in the negative k axis, negative k hat. Okay, so the, the cross product is a vector, and so that, that the direction of that vector is given by the right-hand rule. It's perpendicular to the plane containing the vectors a and b. And then the magnitude is the magnitude of a times b times sine of the angle between them. All right, so there's another way to calculate this, and that's uh, calculating in component form just like we had a, a geometric and a component form to calculate dot products, there's a component form to go along with the geometric form to calculate cross products. So uh, this, this uh, has six terms, so this will go on a little bit. But A cross B is equal to the Y component of A <laughs> times the Z component of B minus the Z component of A times the Y component of B, and that is all the x component 
of the cross product. This whole thing is the x component. So the y component then is the z component of a times the x component of b minus the x component of a times the z component of b. And that's all the y component of the cross product. And so then the z component of the z component of the cross product then is the x component of a times the y component of b minus the y component of a times the x component of b. Okay, and this is now the z component of the cross product. Okay, so that's maybe something you write down and, and uh, be able to reference when you want to do a cross product. It, it may seem complicated, but certainly if you have the components, this is going to be faster than trying to create the vectors and solve for the geometric form. There is a, a very sh uh, nice shorthand way to write this if you're familiar with a matrices and determinants. The cross product is equal to the determinant which is which the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix where the first row are the Cartesian unit vectors the second row are the components of A I just wrote B again the components of A, AX, AY, AZ and the third row is the components of B BX, BY, and BZ so if you're familiar with determinants, this is a, an easy way to remember it. But if, if you're not, if you haven't seen that before, all this is is a compact way of writing what I've written here r right above. Okay, so before we go on and do a couple examples, let, let's explore some uh, of the features of the cross product. One of the most important features that distinguishes it from the scalar product is it's not commutative which means a cross b is not equal to b cross a in fact if you were to calculate it a cross b is equal to negative b cross a and you can see that most easily here from the geometric interpretation if uh, a cross B, A, B sine theta, that's the same, whether or not you have A cross B or B cross A. But when you do the right-hand rule, if your index finger is long A and your middle finger is long B, then your thumb points into the screen or into the page. But if you put your index finger along B and then your middle finger along A, that flips the direction that your thumb is pointing, so it flips the direction of the unit vector. And then, if, and so, the uh, that's one important distinction. The order of the uh, operation matters for the cross product. Okay. Another thing is uh, qualitatively what the cross product is telling you is the sizes of the vectors. Right. If if the magnitude of a and b is larger, then the magnitude of the cross product is larger, and it's telling you the degree to which they are perpendicular the degree A and B are perpendicular you can see what that means if you look at what happens if A um, cross B is equal to zero if A and B are parallel <laughs> H are parallel or anti-parallel. If they're pointing this way or, or even this way, if they're pointing along the same line, then the theta between them tail to tail is zero or 180 degrees and sine of zero and 180 is zero so the cross product is zero. So if they're parallel the cross product is zero. And if they're perpendicular then um, then the magnitude of the cross product is simply the magnitude of the of the, the the product of the magnitudes themselves this is if a is perpendicular to b because that implies theta is 90 degrees and sine theta is 1 90 or, or 270 and so the um, magnitude of the 
the it's maximized the magnitude is maximized when a and b are perpendicular to each other all right so another way to think about that then is that let, let's look at b let's draw a new set here here's b and here's a and so what i want to do is find the uh, component of a that is perpendicular to b if i draw axes that are parallel and perpendicular to b and i find the component of a that's perpendicular to b that's the length of this yellow line well what is that length well it's the magnitude a times sine theta where theta is the angle between a and b and so if i look at my cross product a cross b is equal to a sine theta times b and then the uh, the unit vector so the magnitude of the cross product is the magnitude of b times the magnitude of a perpendicular to b so it, it goes the other way and so if we look at then um, what is the uh, we'll draw an extension of a line parallel to A and then a line perpendicular to A here I can look for the component of B perpendicular to A and that's right here so that's the length of this red line and so the length of that red line is B sine theta and so again if A cross B can be written as b sine theta times a times the unit vector and so a cross b can be considered the magnitude of a times the the component of b perpendicular to a then times the unit vector determined by the right hand rule okay so the cross product is a the result is a vector the direction has to be determined by the right hand rule which we've done a few times now and the magnitude which is given either in geometric form or or here in component form um, gives you a, a vector whose result uh, tells you to what degree the two vectors are perpendicular to each other